speaking now with professional soccer player and son of Jose Maria Piquero, captain of Johan Cruyff's dream team. It's John Piquero. How are you holding up in that Arizona heat and quarantine, John? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty used to the heat now. I've been here for, for a while now. So um, obviously with everything that's happening, just uh, concerned and uh, obviously getting ready to, to start back up the season. Well, the first question we want to ask you, as we mentioned, you are in Phoenix, Arizona, in the United States at the moment as a professional soccer player yourself. But in your life, you've lived in Barcelona, Mexico, San Sebastian in the Basque Country. You've lived in Valencia, Poland, Peru, the United States and Canada. I think I hit all of them. What are some of the challenges to moving around so much as a player and even as a child? Well, I think I'm very fortunate. You know, I don't think as a, as a negative, I, I see it as a great opportunity that I had to travel and, and see the world. And, and obviously, uh, football has been my life ever since I grew up and, and uh, since I was born. So I feel very fortunate. Obviously, it's not always easy, you know, moving around uh, new schools, uh, new teams. Um, but obviously, um, I think uh, it helped me a lot. And, and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very glad to be where I am. Well, we're going to be talking a lot about your family today. So I think before we bounce around too much of your childhood and your adult life as a professional or your dad's career, I want you to tell us the story of the first tattoo that you got when you were 16 years old. Yeah. So, so that tattoo, um, like when we were in Peru and, uh, my, both my parents turned 40, uh, when we were there. So, um, it was kind of, no, they turned 50. Um, and they were like, we want to do something special. And my, neither of my parents had any tattoos. And, and they, 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 we had this logo, family logo, that was done for their wedding. And we decided we were all going to get it. So time went back and, and we went back to Spain. And one day my sister shows up with that tattoo. And then my dad was like, kind of like, oh, my God, now I have to do it. So my dad, my dad and I went, we got it. And then like when we did that, my mom was like, oh my God, I need to do it too. So now the, the four of us have the same uh, tattoo uh, it's my parents initials that's pretty awesome I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take your lead and start doing some tattooing in my house as well um, what was it like growing up in a family that basically you're surrounded by professional footballers um, did you feel any pressure growing up or was it a blessing I think it's definitely a blessing you know uh, I'm so passionate about the game and and I think uh, I'm very fortunate to to have traveled the world and seen so many games and, and so many players uh, there was always like that in my mind, you know, people are asking me, like, are you going to be as good as your dad or, or, or what's, like, do you play, do you play football? Um, so, so, I mean, that was always there. But in my head, I was always like, I'm not going to be as good as my dad. So <laughs> let's forget that. And I just want to be the best player that, that I can be. Um, and, and then there was like a long time that I didn't really enjoy playing. Um, I, I kind of liked watching it more. I just didn't like, I, I was scared of playing. I was scared of people giving me the ball. Uh, it was not a good time. But then, um, I think that came with, with a lot of travel, a lot of changing teams. Like I never was able to settle and develop as a player. Um, but then once I, I was 16 and, and I knew I was going to be in, in a place for a while, it, it helped me uh, find myself a little more and, and enjoy the game a little more. Well, yeah, at the age of 16, I guess, is that where you decide that you want to not only look at potentially being a professional, but obviously at 17 is when you jump over to Wake Forest play and start your collegiate career in the United States. And as much as you say that maybe your heart hadn't been in it at a time, you do wind up winning the Mac Herman trophy with a top collegiate player in the U S so not too, not too shabby there. Different from training though. And the way you had always played the game elsewhere when you moved to the U S. Well, the, the opportunity to come to the U S was more like, um, I wanted to continue studying and playing. Um, I knew that if I stayed in Spain, it was going to be hard to play football, uh, and choose like a school that it was like good. Um, so it was kind of like, if I stay in Spain, I'm probably going to like have to quit fo like playing football at a, at a good level and just focus on school. So uh, coming here, it was more like, I want to try it out. I didn't really knew what uh, college soccer was. So I was lucky enough to end up at a place like Wake. Um, and it was very different. You know, I was 17. There was guys in my team that were 21, 22, uh, very physical game. I was lucky enough to, to come to a coach that loved the European style, loved Barcelona, loved uh, loved football. So uh, trainings were good and, and just took me some time to adapt and, and learn the, the, the game here. Well, that's, that's pretty awesome. Obviously, now working at Phoenix, uh, making a difference in there on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, where do you see yourself in five years' time? It's hard to say. Uh, I honestly try to take it, I'm not going to say month to month, but, but obviously season to season. You know, you try... Uh, I'm still pretty young. I'm still 23. So I, I know I have a lot of things that I, I can work on and things to improve. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just saying it year to year. This year has been a little weird, obviously, with with everything that's happening. Um, but yeah, once the season starts, it's, it's our time to to play again, to shine, and uh, continue to get better. And 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 obviously, I think if you do well, then obviously you're rewarded with more opportunities. And and that's what what I'm hoping to do. Yeah, you're currently with the Phoenix Rising FC in the USL Championship, the second tier of American soccer. And I would also argue as well, Phoenix, arguably the most successful side in the regular season over the last few seasons in the USL. But as far as where you started your professional career in the U.S., you were drafted by the Chicago Fire, fifth overall in 2018, also took a stop in Toronto. What did you learn from those professional experiences at the top level in the MLS and being drafted so high? It was a great experience, you know, obviously the, the opportunity to play in the MLS. Uh, I came as a 17 year old and uh, I would have never uh, believed that if you told me then that I was going to be able to play in the MLS and get drafted. Uh, not fifth, but just in general, get drafted was, was one of my, my goals. Um, so, yeah, obviously things happen and, and uh, they're great experiences that now looking back uh, are amazing. You know, the, the players that I've shared locker room with, the stadiums I've played. Uh, all the memories are there and, and obviously um, things could have gone better. Um, I wish that I was still there, but obviously things happen for a reason and, and you've got to learn from, from your experiences and uh, try to, as I said, get better and, and, and keep improving. For sure. Talk, talking about learning and experiences, um, there's someone in your household, or at least when you were growing up, your dad, who obviously Jose Maria Vaquero, Barca captain, absolute legend. Would you say he was the most influential person growing up in terms of um, adapting to your footballing style? Or are you a sort of combination and mix of all the advice that you've always got? So funny enough, my dad never wanted me to play. Um, when I was really young, uh, obviously all I saw was my dad on TV and people like asking for autographs and I wanted to be like him. You know, I, I wore my Barcelona jersey to to school every day uh my mom wouldn't let me wear it anymore she 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 was pissed at me all the time um but yeah he he didn't want me to play because people would think that I was playing because of him and my mom was actually the one who started like putting me taking me to training and uh for for the longest time my dad never came to games and he would support me and like he would ask how things went but like he would never really uh, give me any advice or coach me or anything like that it was not until I probably came to the states and uh, things starting to like go a little not better but just m more serious and uh, that's when he 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 watched a lot of games and we talked more football we always talked football we always watched games together and when he was a coach we would talk and all that stuff was there but about my game it was not probably until I was in in, in college now he watches he stays up every day every game until 4 a.m watches the game live and uh, we talk a lot of football, with things that I can improve, things that I can do, um, but more as a friend than as a coach, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to go back to originally your learning as well. You were born in the city of Barcelona, uh, in, in Sitges, and what would you say playing for that academy, what that was like playing against Barca's academy, but as well as just give an explanation to people about what it's like to still be in the city of Barcelona, but not necessarily be in either Espanol or Barcelona's academies, but being into one of those other places where the football just, it, it seems to all be one big idea, but you're not necessarily in that academy. Yeah. I mean, I, I was born in Barcelona, moved to Mexico until I was three. And then when I got back, that's when I probably started playing when I was five or six, I was a goalkeeper until I was like nine. Um, but yeah, I mean, in Spain, it's not like here in like a big city, there's one or two academies. I live in a 30,000 people town and there's two teams, two, two academies uh, for such a small town. It's crazy, but obviously all the, every kid plays, plays football. So, so it was good. You know, I, I was never one of the best players. Uh, I was just good. Um, I always played, but, but never, never was one of, of the big stars. So, so with that, and then uh, when I started, I moved to San Sebastian and then I played there for, for two years and I moved to Valencia, I played there for, for one year and then came back to Barcelona, played for another academy, then ended up going to Poland. It was just a lot of changes, you know. Uh, there's so many good teams and so many good players in Europe in general, uh, but, but obviously in, in Spain, in the Barcelona area, there's so many divisions. You know, you think about the U12s and there's six divisions and in the four divisions there's four groups in the fifth divisions there's eight groups uh it's just so hard to explain here because people don't understand how many kids there are and how many kids play football there 
exactly. Um, also, you are really well traveled. You lived in many different countries. And having that experience from playing football in Barcelona or in the Barcelona area, which I did as well, um, obviously wouldn't translate to everyone watching this. But would you, would you say that living in so many different countries has influenced how you see the game? Um, and what would you say to people who think that the Barca way is the right way to play football? Yeah, I, I definitely think that I'm lucky enough to, to have traveled and, and played with, in different countries. You know, when, when my dad was training in, in, in Peru, um, I was there with their second team. When, when I was living in Poland, I was playing with, with the U19s when I was only a U15 uh, of that team. Just a lot of experiences and, and things that at the end of the day, you just like take in, you know, and without even realizing. Um, when people say the, the Barca way is the right way, it's, I don't think it is. I think it's what I believe in, though. But I think it's very subjective. You know, I think if you told Mourinho that, he would probably tell you that that's not the right way. Because at the end of the day, winning takes different things for different people and, and, and uh, different players. And, uh, but I definitely believe that Barca plays a way that inspires me and that I think is very beautiful. And I think if I ever coached, I would definitely want to play in a – similar way because at the end of the day Barca is only one and they they're so good because they do the, the things in a certain way but they're on, the only ones who can do it no one can imitate what they do well yeah we want to continue on that idea what is your connection still today we'll say to Barcelona just as a fan but as far as watching how much of it or what you see or any connections you might have to people from the past in Barcelona Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, my dad uh, played. Now he, he still works. He's the head of the, of the second team uh, for, for Barcelona. So, um, I mean, I've met a lot of my dad's ex-teammates. Um, I've grown up going to Camp Nou, going every weekend. Uh, when I'm back now, I go to watch trainings. To I still go to every game that I can. Um, here in the U.S., I watch every game. That's sacred. Uh, when Barca plays, forget about me. I'm, I'm watching it. Um, I'm just a fan, you know. I, I love watching football, but especially love watching Barca. Um, just the way they play and the idea of seeing Messi. I think every time you, you miss him, it's just one less time you're going to see him. And, 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 and once he's gone, he's never going to be there, you know. So, Honestly, one of the things that I always say that obviously other than family and, and friends that I miss the most is, is being able to, to go to the stadium and, and watch Barca play. I've got the same feeling. Um, I moved to London around 18 years ago and I live in Qatar now, so I certainly understand, understand how you feel. Um, you mentioned Messi, obviously it's the easy name to mention, but out of all the years that you've watched Barca and all the players you've met, etc., other than Messi, who is the most impressive player that you've seen play at the Camp Nou? Uh, for me, it was growing up. I mean, I always say Messi. I'm not going to say Messi is my favorite player because I don't think he's from this world. Uh, I don't think uh, <laughs> it's just other than him. Uh, Iniesta for me was very inspiring. Um, I grew up watching him. I think I started going to the stadium when he started playing and um, just his ability, his presence. I've, I've been able to meet him a couple times every time I've met him. Um, conversations with him were, were great, you know, and uh, he's just someone that I – look up to and, and think of, of so highly. And I think he, other than Messi, was the, he's been the best player to, to ever play at Barca. Yeah, as far as, again, mentioning your dad and speaking to some of these legends, you've said before that your dad, the advice that he seems to have given you the most was to take things day by day. What other advice have you been given by, whether it was your two uncles or your aunt or all the different legends that you've spoken to that sticks with you and seems to come up training to training? Yeah, uh, something that my dad always says is like every day is a new opportunity. Um, and honestly, that's how I try to see life, everything. You know, there's always bads and goods. And um, I think that's – if you ask me one thing that I take from my dad, it's probably that. Um, you know, like sometimes when you're, when you're a football player, you, you want to think forward, you know, and you want to think about tomorrow or whatever it is. And, and I think it's like everything in life. Uh, there's so much you can do, control what you can control. Uh, and enjoy it. You know, I th I'm so fortunate to do what, what I do uh, to play football for a living and um, I got to enjoy it. You know, I think uh, like everything, uh, if you don't enjoy it, you're going to look back and, and regret it. Well, talking about enjoying then, um, it looks like Barca have obviously restarted after the, this horrendous pandemic that we have experienced, um, giving us fans and millions of supporters around the world 
actually something to look forward to, like, like you are saying. Um, how do you see Barca at the moment and what's your prediction for the rest of the season? It's hard to say, you know, also we haven't played probably the best two teams in the league. We've played two teams that um, are, are in the bottom. Uh, so I think it'll, this, this Friday will, will give us a good idea of, of where we stand playing a team like Sevilla who, who come back strong. And, um, but I think obviously uh, Messi looks recharged and I think uh, he's a motor on the team and, and he's the guy who brings the energy. But obviously we have, I think, squad-wise the best team in the league. And um, also with the Champions League, for example, I think being one game, it can be beneficial for us. Uh, you know, like any game, I'll, I'll take uh, us before anyone, you know. Um, so so I, I think we're going to win the league. Um, that's that's just what I hope. And um, I have good good positive energy for, for the Champions League too. You know what I really like is just when you're talking, you're referring to us as us. That, that is very telling. It's good to see. <laughs> That's, I'm sorry. I, I don't even think oh, about it. Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, John, I, I want to continue to get your thoughts on FC Barcelona. Again, you have uh, such a pulse on what seems to be happening even still all the way in Phoenix. And I want to ask you, you spoke earlier about, you know, being in some of those Catalan academies and uh, just how cutthroat football can be for youngsters in the city of Barcelona. So why do you think that we're seeing so few Barca Academy graduates making it as Barca starters in the last five, six, seven years? I, th I think it's very tough. Um, I, I was lucky enough to four years ago, I think, uh, to do the preseason with Barca B, their second team. And from those guys, um, I think only Alenia, um has made it to the, to the first team. Um, and even then, he, he has to go somewhere else for opportunities sometimes. And, and that's how it is in, in, in football. Last year, I was in Toronto, but I, I needed to play. And as a young player, you, you need to look for, for other options. Um, are these players good enough to play in La Liga? Absolutely. Uh, there's all these guys that I played with are playing in first division now. But playing for Barca is not the same thing, you know, and, and I think it's tough. Um, I think it's tough to, to get there and, and to beat the guys who they buy for a lot of money, uh, who have already proved that they can compete not only La Liga, but at the Champions League level. Um, so, so I think it, it just takes time, you know, and, and uh, like now with, with this, so many good players, you know, like Araujo played amazing the other day. Sir, uh, Ricky Puig came in. Uh, Collados played this year too. Uh, there's, there's more young players coming up and, uh, there's always going to be good, good young players, but also it comes to opportunity. And, and I was thinking about it too. Now with COVID, obviously there's going to be more rotations. There's going to be more opportunities for, for young players. So maybe they take them and, and they can stay there for next year. Yep, for sure. Uh, one last question for me. Uh, there's one of the players that you didn't mention, which is the one that made the jump straight from the under 16s all the way to the first team. That's Ansu Fati. Um, there has been rumors, you know, popping up in sport mainly, and then obviously broadcasted by the Times, etc., around the world. Um, is that Sufati? Now, do you see, how do you feel about having a progression that has been so quick from the youngsters? And do you see him staying there for the long term? Yeah, I mean, Ansu Fati is something different, you know. He didn't even do preseason with the first team and, and he ends up, uh, I think he has five goals in the year, which I think is for a 17-year-old is, is not bad, right? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, things happen like that, you know. He played his first game, scored a goal, and, and that's already like in, in everyone's mind. Uh, obviously, he's very talented, but, you know, um, he's competing. He's competing with, with Dembele when he comes back. He's competing with Griezmann, Suarez to play, so... That's the thing, you know, in a, in a team, he would start in every other team, but in Barca, there's so much competition, but it's the same competition for, for, for everyone. So, so obviously, I think Barcelona uh, really like him, and I think Barcelona value him, and, and I definitely think he's going to be an important piece uh, for the club moving forward. Well, John, before we let you go, I'm going to ask you one more. I want from both your career and your father's career what he has spoken about. Now, maybe the Champions League winning that was his highlight of his career, but I'd like to hear what your dad has said is one of his proudest moments as a player. And I also want to hear your proudest or your biggest highlight that you find at this point still in your early career. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't quote me on this, you know, because uh, this is coming from, from me. But I definitely think that his goal against Kaiser Lautern, uh, giving Barcelona the opportunity to continue in the Champions League, um, is his most important moment. Uh, 
and at FC Barcelona, obviously playing there for nine years. Uh, don't call me on it because I feel like he has a lot of memories and a lot of things that have happened that I probably cannot speak for. Uh, but me growing up, for sure, I, I remember everyone talking about it. And, and now you go to the Barcelona Museum and, and they have that, that moment uh, settled. And um, I think uh, everyone will for sure remember him at Barcelona because of that. And personally, um, the moment of getting drafted was very, very special. Uh, but but I, I think it's tough to say that's the best moment of my professional career because that's basically the moment it started. Uh, probably last year, you know, winning 20 games in a row, uh, being holding the longest winning streak in, in North American soccer is uh, pretty special, something that I think is going to be hard to break. Um, and winning the regular season last year was was very special here in, in Phoenix. I had a great season, enjoyed and and um, and I think that that's probably the, the highlight of, of my professional career so far. Well, John, we want to thank you so much for taking the time and wish you the best of luck as, again, you're going to continue to get back to training and hopefully the USL Championship can get back to playing soon. And as always, best of luck to Phoenix Rising FC and to yourself, John. And again, thanks so much for the time. Thank you so much, guys. Muchas gracias.